Okay guys, welcome to another rendition of Read and Review and the book I'm going to be talking about um, it's a book that I'm going to break up into two parts and the reason why is that the story is pretty much a two-part story just been put into one book and that's Pollyanna's Grows Up um, a book that I really did enjoy reading um, and the only reason why it took me so long is because personal life actually stepped in the way uh, but this is a review that pretty much I held back uh, for a long, long time. I really wanted to do it. I really wanted to put it on video. And uh, now I can get a chance to actually talk about this book. Uh, without really spoiling it, um, too much uh, of the book, Pollyanna um, with a, uh, is pretty much a very simple story, but done in such a well, well manner. Um, Eleanor H. Porter, like I said in the first um, review of the original book, have done a good job of keeping the story interesting without having to uh, resort to anything that is violent or anything that is, you know, over the top. She told a very simple story of how uh, a child had changed the lives of not only her family members but the entire town um, just by her presence alone. Um, the Glad game, uh, which she had played in the first book, was pretty much the catalyst of what she really was and uh, there's a lot more to the glad game than meets the eye. She not only plays it to help other people play it to think positive even when things are looking so blink she plays it to keep herself uh, from thinking about her parents who have passed away. There are times that when uh, she's uh, in, the, in, in one chapter she was actually crying and um, her little room because she still thought about her family and she wasn't uh, with them anymore. She couldn't understand why her family was there. And that's a normal reaction. And the Glad Game, in many ways, it was helpful and at the same time it wasn't so helpful because uh, it was a way for her to deal with the situation even when the fact, reality is she wanted so much to talk about um, her family as well as um, the game itself and how much uh, it made an impact. As the story progresses, um, so did uh, the characters um, to the point where she was finally able to share it um, with even her aunt who was very resentful of the Glad game, pretty much resentful of her. She didn't know how to raise a child. She never had that situation where she uh, could raise a child. She was already uh, in her 40s, um, not married, and so having children, having um, that kind of love in the household was something of, of an impossibility. This was not the case um, once the story progressed. She had to, while she began to soften up and she began to become um, that parent uh, that Pollyanna so desperately needed, but it took a lot of learning on her side, including almost a near tragic accident, for her to really open up and realize just how much of a value treasure she had. And that was so good about the story. What I liked also about the first story, and the reason why I'm going into the first one before the second one, because the first one and the second one is pretty much the same thing. What I like about how that story um, resulted, and it pretty much resulted in the cliffhanger, even though you know everything was well, you didn't know how she was doing in the treatment. The story didn't try to make it like a miracle worker. She really was paralyzed, and as you turn the page, um, and even turn, turn the chapter, you begin to realize that, wow, she's really paralyzed, and she's been paralyzed for almost a half a year. Um, she really was in a state where she couldn't move. Um, you really felt that. You felt what the, what, the, what the community was doing to cheer her up. And the, um, the scene ended when, of course, when Pollyanna's aunt announced the engagement, she went to Boston and she went to a rehab and she wrote a letter to her aunt and her uncle, which was the Dr. Chilton, uh, about how she made a progress. And the book just pretty much ended that way. Um, I actually like the way the book ended. I, I think it end, ended perfectly the way it is. Now, the ending of that book surprisingly was actually the beginning of the second book in some ways because the book begins um, with a family who's going through some very um, down, um, down time. They really had um, a rough few years um, being that um, they lost a relative, family members have died, and you had this woman in this book who just basically didn't want to be bothered with anyone. Of course, uh, my sister 
who pretty much worked it within the, the the same place where Pollyanna was being treated, her knew about the girl, knew uh, about her amazing abilities of the Glad Game and how she was able to affect a lot of people around her. Uh, pretty much had the idea to bring Pollyanna back to Boston to live with um, her sister. Naturally, she refused, but she pretty much felt this was the only way to, to get her to live again because she really wasn't living. She was really much, pretty much shutting the door on everyone. And this is where Pollyanna comes in and Pollyanna grows up. Now, mind you, Pollyanna is in a pre-teens in this book. She's not grown up yet. And this is why I'm breaking this story, this review up into two parts and give my overall review um, um, later on. The story pretty much begins almost a year after her therapy. She got back home, she's home, she's um, with her aunt and uncle, uh, and Polly um, Harrington, or now Polly Chilton, has gotten a letter stating how important it was uh, for this family that Pollyanna lived with them um, throughout the winter. Um, she has a very long discussion with her husband, and uh, after, you know, back and forth, they agree um, to allow Pollyanna to stay while they was going to, I believe, Russia or Germany. Um, and uh, so the story begins with pretty much Pollyanna being a stranger in a brand new environment. Um, yeah, she was in Boston, but she was never really outside of Boston. She was in a rehab clinic. In this one, you really get the full experience of Pollyanna exploring uh, Massachusetts. And what I like about this is that the Glad Game, even though it worked it well in uh, Virginia, doesn't quite work the same here. And it addresses this. The one thing I was very, very worried, especially in the first half, is uh, are they going to do the same Goody Two Shoe Glad Game? Um, in this story, and it does, but it does it smart. Um, it did it smart in the first book, but in this one, it's smarter because the glad game can also be a detriment as well as something of a very, um, very helpful tool. And nothing was proven um, than Pollyanna's change of environment because where she was at, I believe, it's called Bloomington. She was in a very closed town environment. Um, there's nothing is rushing, nothing, uh, everybody's not in a rush to get to one place. Now, they, everything, everything is pretty much slow paced. It's the country setting. So the country setting is going to have a different impact than the city setting, and this is probably one of them. And she ended up getting into a lot of stuff that, you know, basically we got scolded by any parent, and she does get scolded in this, in this book. She really does, as well as she should, because she made some very dumb decisions. But you expect this from a child. One of the stuff she's um, doing is that you can already manly sense that she's lonely, immediately. Um, she's talking to strangers where she's not supposed to be talking to. She's interacting with people that are very, very dangerous, and um, they really um, go, she, the author really goes into details of how dangerous it is without actually spilling it out. But you didn't need to spill it out to know the situation. And this is mostly involving her new friends that she's meeting. She's meeting this girl who you really don't know if she's a runaway or just someone who is crying for help but don't know how. But she's pretty much has an attitude um, that softens up um, as the story gets in. She's very, very, uh, she's more of a realistic person, even in today's standard. If you bump into her, you pretty much understand that there's something more that's going on, but she's not going to talk about it. Um, but she defriends this girl, and she meets this person who you're getting a hint that she's looking to do bad things with this girl, and she's pretty much don't want to do it, um, but there's something about survival to the finish. Um, you have to really read that part to understand, but no, make no think about it. There is something going on, and um, Eleanor H. Porter, who's the author of this book, makes it very clear that it's not a good thing. But as for Pollyanna, she really shows her irresponsibility a lot, and that is she's going out, tr doing, trying new experiments, trying to meet people, and it's very clear that she doesn't realize she's in a new environment. Uh, one of the things that she didn't understand, especially in the chat, one of the chapters, is that the f um, the parents is holding their kids along, saying, "Don't talk to strangers," and she's like, "But I'm not a stranger." Yes, you are. You, you're in a new area you're not uh, accustomed to. And this is because um, she's not used to the fast-paced environment of 
Boston. She's not used to it at all. Uh, again, she, you can see all the all the all the traits of Pollyanna, her positive outlook on life, her way she deals with uh, with situations. How to look on the bright side. But what makes this different is that they give the author, at least in the first half, gives a realistic situation that even Pollyanna itself don't have the answers for. Even though she's trying um, to help matters, she's actually making it kind of worse. And even she's beginning to realize just how bad the situation really is. So one of the main things, and this is something that she's not aware of, is that it deals with a kid who may or may not be the lost nephew of this woman she is living with. Um, this is one of the main counts of the story because this woman is grieving uh, she have lost her nephew, she have lost um, some of her family members, her sis uh, other sisters, um, and she doesn't know if the nephew's alive or not. During this situation, she befriends a couple of guys. One of, the, one of the boys was this kid who had the same name, and uh, as a result, she believes in her mind that this may be the lost, uh, the lost relative that um, this woman is grieving on. Um, she managed to convince her to see the kid, but even she, it's because it was so long, she doesn't know if that's her or not. And you can sense the conflicts right there. Um, she knows that Pollyanna's trying to help, but at the same time, she really don't want to get into that situation. And she really doesn't want to adopt the kid, even though she ended up doing it anyway, but that's because after a while she realized just how much she actually cared for the kid. But there's another situation going on, and that is to pretty much um, something that I was kind of surprised that Eleanor H. Porter had done, in the, at least in the first half of the book, it uh, pretty much uh, tackles poverty and the different of classes, um, because the place that Pollyanna goes is not well kept, and this is pretty much perfect with the time, because even in New York, uh, we had a situation where a lot of the apartments was not well kept. Uh, it was pretty much in poorest conditions, um, slum dwellings uh, where you have, you know, e you know, towels, you know, clothes being racked up from one building to another. Those were the old days. I mean, it was even like that in the 80s. But uh, make no mistake about it, um, those slum dwellings uh, was not an easy uh, foresight to see people sleeping in cold condition, horrible condition, with no heat, broken windows, the staff barely was able to hang through. Um, and that description fits well with the story. And what's made it more ironic is that the lady who Pollyanna was living with owned that building. Now you may say, how can you actually feel for this woman when it's very clear that she doesn't care for these tenants or the building that she uh, was supposed to keep upkeep because uh, clearly she's a landlord but here's the thing she didn't even know that was her building that was the whole thing when she got there um, she said that she should talk to the landlord about this um, situation because disgusting and when she realized it was one of the buildings and one of the superintendent who was supposed to manage these buildings she realized wow I haven't been paying attention to what's going on and that's only until she got into that person's um, grill and says, you better fix this or you're going to be gone. And that's when things started changing. But it does bring up that tackle about the classes and how even when people want to help, how the pride of a lot of people, which still goes on to this day, say, I'm not taking any handouts. I'm not looking for that kind of stuff. We're fine without your um, pity. And the book tackles it beautifully done. It, it beautifully tackles that. Uh, I was very, very happy uh, that they actually took, tackled a very, t very serious issue. Even more serious in those time periods than it is in, um, now. But it was very, very serious. And I think LOH, well, I give kudos for that. Because it was not, um, you know, okay, here's a solution, problem solved. No, this was a serious solution and you saw how serious it is. And then, and more so with the ki with the uh, with the with the boy who, um, for the most part, wasn't, and I'm only assuming wasn't because they because they never really said that it was indeed that kid, um, who was missing all the time. No, we it, it wasn't. Um, they never really confirmed that. Um, she said she doesn't know, she doesn't think so, and that was it. Um, so it really never really got resolved. Um, it could have easily said, yes, this is the boy. Um, yes, this is what the long lost son, I miss you, I love you. No, that was not it. She never really found out if that was the kid or not. Um, she did adopt him, but only because she wanted to adopt him. But in the end, um, she never really 
to find out what happened to to, to um, her lost nephew. And after a while, when the ending, it didn't really matter. Um, that what matters was how Pollyanna impacted everyone um, throughout that whole entire time she stood uh, with this family. She impacted it a lot because one, she wasn't able to stay alone. She was with someone. She was with Pollyanna. If not, someone came to see Pollyanna. And after a while, she ended up came to see him, the boy. And she realized after more this um this exposure, uh, it was very evident that she now could not live alone anymore. She could not be alone anymore. And that led to a lot of transactions. Now there's more. Now there's more people coming over. Now there's more interaction with other people outside. And she became more and more happy um, as the story progressed. And that was actually the the main gist of it. As for the glad game, yeah, it was there, but it wasn't uh, something that was over preach. Um, and that is another thing that was very very shocked of this story. Um, I was expecting glad being used all the time. It actually wasn't. It was actually less in the first half than it was in the whole entire Pollyanna book combined. And that was actually a good thing. In fact, Pollyanna was in conflict with herself with the Glad game because she was being glad of something that was not supposed to be a glad thing at all. And she even recognized it, saying, this is not, uh, is not good. And when you read it, you can see the conflict there, saying, maybe the Glad game is not always a good thing to start doing, especially on very strong tides. But um, it was something that I was very glad to do to show that there were some flaws with the Glad game. A lot of people had a lot of problems with how um, the story kept throwing that out there, overly excessively happy. This is not one of them. There's a lot of emotion involved in the story, not only with Pollyanna, especially when the situation where she got herself lost in Boston. Um, she was crying, she was panicking, that glad game didn't help her there situation. Um, eventually, um, a friend of her, a friend who she met with was able to um, escort her back to her home and boy, she let her have it to the point where even some of the stuff that she uh, wanted to, um, to help out with uh, didn't end up exactly what she planned. Uh, but in the overall run, her presence, just the fear of presence and just the mere fact that she really cared for the people she came in contact with, uh, really um, residents through all the other characters in this book, and it was very, very good how they did it. Um, they didn't rush into it, they didn't try to throw everything else at once. Each chapter from the first half took its time explaining things, took its time introducing us to characters, took its time explaining the situation, scenarios, um, and that's something of a good, well-paced storytelling that only a great um, storyteller can do, a great author can do. And this is what makes that first half of Pollyanna Gro Grows Up so unique. It's very, very refreshing to read something um, that is so simple yet um, so relieved and so much of a page turn that you just can't stop reading it. Um, keep in mind, you don't have to have violence, you don't have to have um, this intensity or a lot of cursing and swearing to keep your mind interested. If the words jump out on you where you can visualize what is actually going on, the author has accomplished what he's done because he got you hooked and he got you wanting to come back for more. And Elmo H. Porter has done that with Pollyanna Grows Up, and the, um, at least in the, um, the first half. Now what happened um, during the end of this first half is very simple. Uh, she's now finally back home. A lot of people greeted her. A lot of people were happy to see her back. Um, she got a letter from the people thanking them and uh, and and um, you know wonder and um, saying that she had done so great uh, and she doesn't even know how much of an impact she had. And to my astonishment, and I'm actually glad again that Eleanor H. Porter took this route, uh, which led up to the second half, which I will review. Uh, very, very shortly, Polly Chilton was not happy about this. She was not happy at all. And it's not because she felt her, uh, her niece did a bad thing. It's because she saw the sign of how dangerous hum, um, the glide game can actually get. And uh, what I mean by that is a person with that uh, type of um, influence can get cocky, can get arrogant, and can get corrupted by the thing that was meant to help people. And Pauline Chilton knew 
how dangerous it can get. And she spoke to her husband. Her husband was first surprised that she was thinking this way, but it's understandable thinking. And she said, I don't want her not to be aware of what she's doing. I don't want her to not um, be aware of the responsibility she's doing. And that is why she decided um, at the end of the first half that she's going to go traveling, she's going to be with us, and I'm not going to spoil her, which she doesn't. And that is something of smart thinking. Um, and many people said, oh, she's just overdoing it. No, she's not. She's actually uh, is well aware of um, Pollyanna's um, strength as well as her weaknesses, and is very aware of how dangerous um, those strength and weaknesses can get if it's done wrong. And hearing that letter saying that um, she made a strong impact but don't even realize it um, really did touch into heart. And especially when she said, I don't want my, my niece spoiled. I'm not going to spoil her. I want to keep her as uh, respectable um, in terms of more values as possible. And that's how the first half actually ended. The second half is a whole different story by itself. The second half... And honestly, I don't know why, uh, maybe she wasn't thinking about making it to three books. That's probably one of the reasons why she just wanted to do two books. But this is why the second half is a totally different story all by itself. Because this is where she grows up. This is where um, the story reached a pretty dark time where the glad game not only going to be tested, but Pollyanna as a woman um, and how she viewed things as an adult and uh, believe when I say this um, how she uh, view things back when she was a child will be different it's not going to be uh, as uh, lovey dovey as one may think um, there's a lot of dark story this is a darker story than what you may may think and I will talk about that in my next read and review but until then this is J77 and um, by the way, <laughs> almost forgot, um, the first half will get a 4 out of 4. I think it's definitely uh, something worth reading. But what about the second half? I will give my reading after I talk about that in detail. But until then, this is Jason 77 saying take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you soon.